priests were hunted, and ordinary Catholics remained in secrecy. Hey, Father, what is time's mass? Not so loud, we'll be in trouble. Despite the persecution, Mary's parents, Ursula, and Marmaduke remained faithful Catholics. As Mary grew up, her parents thought that she would marry into another prominent Catholic family. There were plenty of young gentlemen, but Mary was not interested in them. She wanted to become a nun. Father, I want to become a nun. But Mary, we have so many suitors for you, and you are not joining the convent, and that's it. But Father, no. Her parents tried more matchmaking. Look at our lovely boy, Nivel. I'm sure she will like him. Even a spiritual director told her that it was better to marry than enter religious life. The Catholic cause depends on you. Just think about it. But Mary did not seem to be satisfied. So she prayed and prayed, knowing that if religious life was the right thing, God would make it happen. Eventually, her parents agreed. Thank you, God, for granting all my wishes. She was sent to a convent in St. Thomas. There, she got to know that poor lay nuns were expecting her. But this wasn't true, as the nun said. Sorry, we have no rooms left in the nunnery. She left that convent and with the help of some friends, opened the nunnery for English poor class. Finally, she was going to live the life she always wanted. But this did not seem to be God's plan. She was sent for some other work, but she did not know what. She had little companions of like-minded people. They settled in St. Thomas and opened a school for local girls. But this was not the end. Mary wanted to do something special. The turning point came in 1611. While praying, Mary heard God tell her, Take the same of the society. That meant that she should adopt the same way of life as the priests. Her companions did the same thing and in 1620 they went to the Pope. No enclosure, no approval. Slowly her schools in St. Doma, Cologne, Rome and Naples were closed down. Mary was surprised to see that Pope had done this. She was then imprisoned in Munich. Please come with me. Mary was locked in a small and filthy cell with insufficient light or air and in complete isolation. The poor clay nuns were forbidden to speak to her. Soon, a method of communication was established by the means of lemon juice and the laundry paper. Her acceptance of the lot as the will of God and the endurance of physical pain prompted her to resort to cheerful exhortation such as, be merry and doubt not our master. God, please free me from this prison. Subsequently, she was released. Young Ali. And the Pope said, You 
you are not a heretic. But her plans were not approved. Mary's health grew worse. And her last words were, Cherish God's vocation in you. Let it be constant, efficacious, and loving. May we be in witness to the love of God and spread that in our community, beginning with our own family. Vocation does not come from a voice out there, calling us to be something we are not, but comes from a voice in here, calling us to be the people we were born to be, to fulfill the original selfhood given to us by God. God will assist and lead us through all crises, but we must perform our part well.